Hi everyone, this is Elham from Skin Chakra and today I'm going to talk to you about a subject that is extremely confusing to non-chemists and that's electrolytes. Let's see first what are electrolytes. Electrolytes are the thing that are coming between your urine, your blood, an isotonic drink, and a battery. From a chemical point of view, an electrolyte is a substance that dissociates into ions in water or in molten phase. When you look at sugar, it is a bisaccharide consisting of glucose and fructose units. So these two units are repeating in the sugar molecule. And when sugar is dissolved in water or even is melted, it doesn't change its chemical form. It is dissolved in molecular form, it doesn't dissociate further. Even the tiniest particle is still a sugar molecule. So sugar is no electrolyte. But sodium chloride, for example, your table salt, when it dissolves in water, it decomposes to sodium cations and chloride uh, anions. So it is an electrolyte. It is the same if you can melt sodium chloride. It has a very high melting point. But if you can melt sodium chloride, it dissociates into ions. And this is why sodium chloride is considered an electrolyte, whereas sugar is no electrolyte. There are strong and weak electrolytes. And uh, this is something, if you are formulating, that's good to know about that. Sodium chloride, for example, completely dissociates into sodium and chloride ions, and it is considered a strong electrolyte. Magnesium sulfate, in contrast, it doesn't completely dissociate. At any time, you have some magnesium sulfate, some magnesium ions and some sulfate ions. So it is considered a weak electrolyte. So what does this all mean to a formulator? Why the hell shall we be concerned about electrolytes? And what do they do in our formulations at all? Electrolytes have an enormous impact on the stability, performance, and viscosity of personal care formulations, home care formulations, and even pharmaceuticals. So as a formulator, we must know them, what they are, which ingredients are considered electrolytes in our formulations, and what we can do with them. One of the most significant impacts of electrolytes in, in personal care and home care formulations is the impact on the shape of the micelle. You know, micelles are the aggregates that are made of surfactants. The best known and the most famous form is the um, circular micelle. Uh, this is the, usually the first type of the micelle that forms. But by adding electrolytes, the micelle um, geometry changes to hexagonal, to cylindrical, to bilayer. And each one of these shapes has its own kind of viscosity. If you are an old-fashioned formulator or perhaps read some old-fashioned formulation books and instructions, for example, you know that by adding sodium chloride to anionic surfactants, the viscosity increases. This is one of the first things that we learned in the formulation school when you are working with an anionic surfactant with uh, shampoos, shower gels, even dishwashing liquids, you add sodium chloride to increase the viscosity. 
Even today, when you go to grocery or supermarket and take bottles of shampoos and showers of conventional formulations, those that usually use PEG derivatives and cocamidopropyl beta-ion, you, you will see that sodium chloride is one of the ingredients that is deliberately added to the formulation to increase. It works mainly with ionic surfactants, sodium chloride and other surfactants don't have any huge impact on the shape of other micelles when you are working with non-ionic formulations, with uh, uh, polyglucosides, for example, that are very common in natural formulations, you don't have this effect. With salt, uh, you need to consider that salt first increases the viscosity of the formulation, reaches a plateau, and then rapidly um, falls from the other side of the root, and the viscosity is reduced when you overdose the salt. So this was, this is another topic that we learned in a formulation school in old-fashioned formulation schools that we work with um, PEG derivatives and anionic surfactants that you can add salt to a certain level but if you overdose it the viscosity is rapidly reduced. In emulsion making you perhaps know that in oil in water emulsions when you add an electrolyte, the emulsion is destabilized. Quite in the contrary, a water in oil emulsion needs an electrolyte for stabilization. So this is another case when you really need to take care of the presence of electrolytes. In one case, you need to add electrolyte for stabilization. In the other case, you need to remove electrolytes or at least take care that you don't overdose electrolytes so that your uh, emulsion stays stable. This is why we add salts and other electrolytes, for example, to biphase formulations. You know that biphase formulations, no matter if it is a cleansing product, a conditioning product, a lotion in the, in the form of biphase, you have some surfactants in the, in the formulation and when you blend the or shake the bottle, the container, so that the both phases are mixed. The optic effect is that the water and oil phase separate very fast and in very clear phases with no interface at all. And unless you deliberately add an electrolyte, you don't have this effect. You can try it at home by blending uh, water and oil phase and um, shaking the bottle, and you will see that you don't have this clear kind of separation unless you use salt. Again, because here is a temporary oil in water emulsion made, you add salt to the formulation so that this oil in water emulsion is very rapidly broken and the faces separate in a clear uh, face separation without any uh, interface. Oil in water formulations, you need to keep in mind that different emulsifiers have different electrolyte tolerances. Some of the emulsifiers you cannot mess around at all and by adding the slightest amount of electrolyte, uh, the emulsion breaks into a mess. Some electrolytes have higher um, tolerance for electrolytes and you can add some electrolytes to the emulsion. So this is very dependent on the type of the emulsifier that you are using and you need to either get this information from the supplier or experiment to see how your emulsifier works with the electrolytes. Another example when we work consciously or unconsciously with electrolytes is the buffering. When you buffer, use buffers, buffers are blends of a weak acid and its salt 
So the salt is an electrolyte or a weak base and it's salt. Here again, electrolytes. So these electrolytes are used in buffering as well. The question is where do electrolytes come from and why shall we take care of them or why shall we add them to our formulation? Some electrolytes are deliberately added to the formulation. Some are part of an ingredient and come with the ingredient. Sodium lactate, sodium PCA, sodium gluconate, sodium citrate, sodium phytate, these are all electrolytes. They are all weak electrolytes, but these are electrolytes that we deliberately add to our formulations as humectants, antistatic ingredients, chelators, or buffering ingredients. So by adding them, if you are not chemist, perhaps you have used them unconsciously without knowing that these are electrolytes. And so you need to take care that, for example, when you are adding them to, a, to, a, to an oil in water emulsion, you are playing with the stability of the emulsion. Some emulsifiers don't like these electrolytes, although they are weak electrolytes, they don't like them at all. Some of them tolerate a low concentration. Some of them, you rather don't mess up with them. Other electrolytes that are part of an ingredient, specifically uh, surfactants um, have a low concentration of electrolytes and your plant extracts. Plant extracts contain minerals. Even if no salt is added deliberately to the extract, water soluble extracts, glycolic, glyceric, hydroglycolic, they contain um, a low concentration of salt usually. Cocamidopropyl betaine, for example, can contain up to 7% uh, salt. So it comes with the ingredient and it has a um, high impact on the formulation. So the bottom line is that electrolytes are either deliberately added to the formulation or come with a raw material. So when you are working with your raw material, the first thing is to look into the TDS or safety data sheet or a certificate of analysis to see if it contains any electrolytes. And then when you are working with that ingredient, making a cleanser product or water in oil or oil in water emulsion, consider that that ingredient might have an electrolyte. In other cases, you are adding the electrolyte deliberately, but then you need to go through stability testing, specifically with oil in water emulsions, to see if your emulsifier likes the electrolyte and can tolerate the electrolyte. Sometimes you can add the electrolyte from the beginning to your water phase. Sometimes you have to add the electrolyte after emulsification and during the cool down so that the emulsifier um, works what it should work and you don't destabilize the emulsion. Keep in mind that the electrolytes, those that you deliberately add and those that come with the ingredients have an impact on the viscosity, performance and the stability of your product and on the stability, specifically on the stability on the emulsions. I hope I could answer some of your questions relating to the electrolytes or some of the whys and why when you add sodium lactate to an emulsion, for example, the viscosity is changed or sometimes even the stability is uh, changed. And if you want to learn more and go into the details of cosmetic chemistry, you can become a member of our membership group uh, a six month subscription for example use this link to subscribe to our membership group where we have monthly video meetings q and a's and specific posts for the members and a specific 
members only Facebook group when we really go into the detail of cosmetic chemistry. Thank you for your attention.